Hey everybody, it's a hot one out here today, but we're working on a brand new project to put up some electric fencing for our goats. Now, this is our the same goats that we just got the temporary fencing for, but we want to fence in our entire property at some point, and looks like maybe electric fencing might be the way that we go. Still not 100% sold on it, but we're about to test it. So I told you in permaculture video that I want to do a chicken coop in the area that's just north of our uh, little carport that we use for the goats and for the rabbits. But that area needs to be cleared out, and so does the rest of the property. But we're going to take the advice of a friend, Tommy Alderman at Alderman Farms, who said, start small and make sure that the goats understand the fencing and respect it before we put them way out in the back of the property where we can't monitor them more frequently. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this small area, uh, which it's a little bit of work having to set up a temporary area with electric fencing, but hopefully we'll reap the benefits in the end by having animals that respect the uh, fencing once we put them out in the, in the back pasture. So we're starting in on this project because there's just too many things to be done around here, uh, and I can't keep up with it all by myself. So kind of hit a little bit of realization. We were spending a lot of money on feed, and the goats could be doing the land clearing for me. So rather than me have to worry about trying to clear the land and spend money on goat feed, we're going to electric fence areas a little bit at a time, probably about a half acre to an acre at a time, and as the animals clear out the land, we'll be able to put them in the next section that we've already got started up. So I've already started in on this project. This is a pretty stout pine tree near the northern edge of our property. You can see the barbed wire fence that actually goes behind it to a tree that's just beyond it. Uh, my neighbor put up that barbed wire fence eons ago before we ever moved here, and I can tell that because he's um, nailed it directly into trees, and I can see just how much the trees have grown over it. I'm electing to strap these onto the tree so that I can take them back off later and, and do a little less damage. And... You know, one thing about electric fencing is they tout how inexpensive it is, about like eight cents a foot or something to that. But that's true if you're using one strand. But when you're using six strands as an attempt to keep in goats, uh, the price goes up significantly. So what you can see here is down at the bottom, they're six inches apart, um, then an eight inch span and then a 10 inch span. And to make that a little easier on myself, I took an old piece of PVC pipe and marked off those measurements ahead of time and then just walked around like a walking stick to everywhere I needed to go and I didn't have to pull the tape back out. I could just put that stick there and I knew where I needed to be. And it's got the up arrows on it because, well, it's hot and I'm tired and it sounds like something I would do to accidentally flip that thing upside down and start putting things in the wrong places. So it's just a, a dummy check. But anyway, I've already got all of the uh, connectors hooked up around the edge. I've already strung the bottom line. You can see I'm not doing this uh, extremely taut, uh, but we'll get there. And now I'm about to go string the other five lines. And I'll show you how we hook up the uh, solar controller that we're using. So I had to share this with you. Of all the things that I had to buy, all the different kinds of connectors and these little poles and whatever else, the controller, the wire and so on, the most, the thing I'm most happy with purchasing is this little dolly. Uh, I don't know what the right word for it is, but it's nothing more complicated than a bent piece of metal that is connected together. That axle down there is just a piece of EMT pipe, and you can raise that ring up that's right there at the collar. You can raise that ring up and it'll spread open and you can take that spool off there and now that's a half mile 14 gauge galvanized steel wire and you can only imagine how much that weighs but with this all I gotta do is I mean that was with very little effort <laughs> just tugged it along so uh, worth the investment if you're doing some long hauls it is awfully hot and humid if I can give you one piece of advice do this whenever it's cool in your area not when it's 90 degrees and humid outside. But that said, it is all up and running. Uh, we have attached all the uh, wires together and we have tested them and they are all popping hot, as Tommy would say, they're, they're popping. We've also uh, incorporated a, a little thing I'm gonna call the Tommy Alderman uh, 
<laughs> rod watering device. So when I was thinking about putting in an electric fence, I asked Tommy, you know, what do you do about the ground rods? All the fancy instructions say, you know, put out three different ground rods. And uh, I wasn't too keen on having to do that. They wanted, you know, almost 20 bucks a piece for these dumb things. And he said, man, I only use one, and I put a bucket next to it that's got a little hole in it so it keeps the ground there nice and moist. Well, heck, if that didn't sound like a good idea, we've got ton of the ton of these uh, cat litter buckets. So we sacrificed one, put a hole in the bottom of it, and it's uh, going to keep the ground moist. So that is the Tommy Alderman ground rod watering system, or whatever you like to call it. Sorry, Tommy. We'll find something better to name you after. Since we put the goats in here, uh, they have run up against the uh, fence a couple times, and now they're eating happily in the middle of the pen. Uh, our great Pyrenees uh, touched it a couple times and did a few laps around yelling at the fence, but uh, she's learned to stay away from it for now as well. So here's how it's looking. It's not the uh, most level or most uh, straight piece of work, but it's uh, working just fine. One thing I experienced that kind of frustrated me is that the plastic... Uh, step-in posts that they sell for electric fencing doesn't seem to have the ability for you to easily clip on the wire at the right intervals that they want for goats. Uh, for goats they were recommending we do six inches from the ground to the first wire and, and then six inches for all four of the, the bottom wires then eight inches then ten inches but the clips on these aren't spaced out like that so what I ran into were problems where it's going like this and then down like this between the posts but you know there's so little variance between it it's it's ugly really but it's not anything that I think is going to affect um, the effectiveness of the wire so we're just going to go with it for now here's a uh, better shot for you top of the a bale shot you see Piper's uh, she's none too thrilled she's hit the fence a few times but we're going to keep her in there with the goats so she learns her job to protect them and gets to know them that Hopefully they'll clear out all that, and then uh, you can see the corner post right at the edge of the screen there, and then it follows where you can see the white poles in the back, all the way up to, oh, I don't know, five foot into the woods there, middle screen, and goes about 20 feet over this way, middle screen, probably about... 20, 30 feet back into the woods and then comes up here to that corner where that's where the controller is. There you go. So it's not a very big place, but it's only about 200 feet, not even that. It's probably only about 100 feet in front of our front door. So we'll be able to keep a close eye on them, make sure they learn about it and give me time to put up more wire in the back. Well, one other thing to share with you before I close out here. We are using a solar paneled, um, I believe it's called a controller. And the reason we went with this uh, is, uh, well, several reasons. Number one, uh, we're eventually going to put these animals way down the back of our property, which would either require um, putting in a DC battery back there or running AC power about, oh, 600 feet or so which I didn't have any interest in doing. So the solar panel one wasn't all that much more expensive. It was actually on sale. I got this thing at a tractor supply company for about $80 less than what they were looking for it on the manufacturer's website. So it was a steal. And plus, if you see here, it's rated for 10 miles. Now, one thing that I learned is that that's 10 miles of wire. So, for some rough math to do six wires around one acre perimeter or around the perimeter of one acre of land is uh, just a little over one mile worth of wire so with seven acres that'd be just a uh, little over well, if you round up we'll just call it eight miles so we could do the entire perimeter of our property which we don't intend to do but we could if we wanted to so point here being it will grow with us as as we grow the fencing we don't have to worry about buying another controller well, I appreciate you guys watching uh, if you've got any questions about this just inbox me about it 
uh, my my YouTube inbox is open to everybody. So uh, or find me on Facebook or G Plus or whatever makes you happy, and I'll answer your questions about it. It's just I'm sorry, but it's just too dang hot to film every little aspect of this. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.